Eighth Grade was directed by stand-up comedian Bo Burnham and stars Elsie Fisher as a girl named Kayla, who is in her last week or so of eighth grade. And, you know, she's just trying to survive because everything is so painfully embarrassing and just the worst. And this was definitely something that I related to since uh, Fisher's character is a bit of a dork. And I know this is going to come as a shock to you guys, but I was a dork and I still kind of am. You know, shocking, whatever. <laughs> But, anyway, this is the kind of film that I think any kid, adult, uh, or, or adult, whatever, who has ever been that middle schooler or high schooler who was shy or unpopular, who tried to be more outgoing, tried to make friends, can really relate to. First off, Elsie Fisher gave an outstanding, very realistic performance, very charming as this awkward teenage girl, and I basically loved everything that she brought to it. I don't know if I can really go into... <sighs> Ugh. God, I'm just sick this week. I can't, I can barely talk. My, my sinuses are acting up. God. Ugh. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. I'm going to try to power through it. But, you know, I, I basically loved everything that she, um, that she brought to the film. I can't really say too much in detail. Uh, because I feel like I'll give away spoilers, but one performance that I wasn't expecting to love, especially uh, from watching the trailers, was that of Josh Hamilton, who plays Kayla's single dad, and, you know, he has a, a few amazing scenes uh, with Kayla. There is an issue that I have with him, but I'll get into it a little bit later, and... You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight one of my favorite scenes with him, and it's a scene uh, closer to the end that he has with Kayla, and... Some people will relate with this, you know, it's, it involves Kayla asking him a basic question that, um, I need a little bit of water, that I feel like every kid has asked their parent at some point, and, and they usually give a bullshit answer, but he had an amazing response to it, and it kind of moved me, and I think, I think if you haven't seen the movie yet, when you watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you've seen the movie, you know exactly the scene that I'm talking about. The writing as well was surprisingly realistic. I remember watching the trailers and thinking, oh god, this is going to be cringy as hell. I don't know if I'm going to be very excited to see this, which I, I kind of personally wasn't. But, you know, my wife said, hey, let's go. And honestly, every time she picks out a movie, she's just... I don't know, she's got an eye for quality for the most part. Um, but anyway, they were going for cringy. But, um, but I saw it more as they were over-exaggerating what it's like to be a kid or a teenager. And, mm. Oh god, I usually don't like drinking water, but uh, I'm so dehydrated, I, I actually, it actually tastes good. Um, but yeah, over-exaggerating what it's like to be a kid or a teenager, it showcases... Uh, adults doing things like dabbing because, you know, they think it's cool, or saying something that was, uh, or saying that something was going to be lit, which I still, ha I, I don't even like that, I, God, I'm so old-fashioned. Um, and I was worried that all I was gonna see was just stuff like that, adults doing stuff, cringy and nothing else, but instead, I felt like it, you know, the characters and world is showcased in... God, ugh. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, guys. It's showcased in a way that it speaks to more of the human condition and how teenagers act naturally, as well as the adults tr just trying to communicate with them, but uh, using whatever is culturally significant at the time, because it only occurs uh, a number of times throughout the runtime. I would even get flashes of nostalgia and bad memories whenever something uh, something was happening with Kayla, you know, whenever she was getting to go to a party that she wanted to go to, or getting to hang out with people who are a bit older than her. And, you know, you just keep waiting for things to crash and burn, because most likely that's how it happened with you when you were younger, so you're just waiting for this. The structuring of the film and its three acts was also something that stood out, because in between acts, um, okay, so Kayla has a YouTube account, 
and in between the acts, it would show her um, recording a video giving uh, lifestyle advice, you know, about how to be more confident and, you know, how to best make friends, you know, that kind of stuff. And then they would take that dialogue and interlay it, interpose it with uh, the following scene, and it would be of her trying out her own advice, you know, and I think someone who, um, who didn't grow up as a dork or introvert would say that she's just being fake uh, because she's giving advice that she can't actually uh, do herself, but if anything, someone like me looks this uh, looks at this as she, you know she is just using those videos to hopefully reach out and connect to others. You know we don't we don't get a grasp of whether it's working or not because we don't get a grasp of you know how many people watch her channel or watch her videos other than one person who uh, mentions to her in person that he's at least you know, he at least knows about the channel, not that he's, you know, seen it. But, um, either way, the the small aspect, uh, for me is, I feel like it's a great commentary on our modern day social media culture, where you have all of these people over here telling you, you know, how to live your life, but they don't actually know how to follow their own advice, and they're just making up shit. The film does follow a couple of cliches that you would expect from this, uh, from this, uh, middle school, high school, uh, kind of, uh, like, situational comedy, you know, but most films, uh, just do them because, you know, it's, it's the norm, but, okay, here's one cliche, um, and this will give you a better grasp. Um, it involves a cool kid that Kayla has a crush on, you know, where that usually happens in most of these ones. But in a normal film, they would uh, zoom in on their face and then either some kind of uh, romantic orchestrational music would play or some kind of romantic pop song would play. But you could tell that the filmmakers were poking fun at themselves because almost every time she looked at him, it would just immediately zoom in, fixate on his very, very blue eyes. The blue really popped in the movie for some reason, but right when it would fixate on his eyes, this booming techno music would start playing, and I just couldn't compose myself. Luckily, we were the only ones in the theater, so I was able to actually s almost scream with laughter every time it happened. And now I will get into my one con, which I'm actually glad that it was just one, but it's still something that took me out of the film occasionally, and it involves uh, Kayla's father. Because of the realistically grounded uh, approach to the material that Bo Burnham went with, um, he, the character felt a little too impossibly perfect uh, in retrospect, so the idea that he is basically a perfect dad was a little too fantastical for me. In the end, I really enjoyed 8th Grade. I actually think that it was snubbed, this most recent uh, Oscar nomination uh, announcement, because of the fact that it, it wasn't at least nominated for original screenplay, but I'll get over it eventually. I, either way, this, this film has some, some fantastic performances. I really enjoyed the grounded write, writing, and I can't speak today. And I cannot wait to see what's in the future for Bo Burnham as a director and a screenwriter, and for Elsie Fisher as a performer. And that's where I will end this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do not hesitate to hit that like button, please. And if you have not already, hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with everything that's going on with the channel. Once again, thank you for watching and farewell until the next video.